In the last video, we finished up the installation of NetBackup, and we started the daemon or processes and services that would run NetBackup for us. And finally, we installed a driver that we downloaded for the particular tape drive or tape library that we were using. In our case, it's a an HP drive with a, a driver called LTT. We installed the LTT driver with the RPM command, RPM minus UVH, followed by the RPM package. And then we verified by querying all the RPM packages and filtering out using the grep command for LTT, and we saw it was installed successfully. Now it's time to launch NetBackup and initiate the configuration for our environment. Now in the last video we said that NetBackup was installed typically in user OpenV and since we accepted most of the defaults, let's go ahead and clear the screen first make it less cluttered and let's change directory to user open v and let's hit ls and we see several directories and a file this net backup directory is a key directory it contains commands so does vol manager volume manager so all these are also important but most of your time in which you're not using the graphical user interface, you'll probably spend inside the net backup or vol manager for more advanced system administration. Let's go ahead and change directory into net backup and do an ls, and we would see various other files and directories. Let's go into the bin directory, which in Unix means binary executable binary files or executable files, usually in this case executable files. If we do a listing we see several files in this color indicating they're executable. So let's type pwd for print working directory and as we saw or explained before user open v net backup bin very important directory. One very important file in here is JNBSA. This is the file that will launch the NetBackup console. So let's go ahead and issue dot slash JNBSA. And this is probably not what you expected. It's certainly not what I expected. We have some kind of error this might look a little crazy to you, especially if you're not familiar with Java, but typically this is what Java errors look like, so you may want to get a little used to the overall picture of what it looks like, and chances are you won't have to uh, know that much about what this is saying. Right here where it says error, I see no such file or directory around this which indicates to me that this is some missing file or library. So a little research would probably point you in the direction that there's a package or software that's missing. So let's go ahead and try to install that. And that's not what's missing, but I have... Um, Let's go to our desktop, where I have a note about this. And I have a little note on how to install the missing file so let's copy that and clear the screen let me repaste that to the screen and basically 
what we have here is the name of the file libxp we found out for, from our research the entire file name is xorg-x11-deprecated-libs which sounds like a mouthful it is and you probably don't need to be concerned about it uh, the important thing to know is that the clue we saw in the Java error pointed us with a little research to this missing file. So we use the yum command, which we're already familiar with, and we say yum install, and there was no need to download this file. Yum went out to its repository on the internet and found uh, this file and initiated the install as we issued this command, yum install file name and so we see part of it was installed and now it's asking us if this file size is okay and we're just gonna say Y for yes and hit enter and it's doing some other stuff you can read that if you have some time I'm just gonna say yes and let it go nuts we see it's installing libxp and complete this looks good so let's go ahead and clear the screen again and let's try that install I'm using the up arrow to go back to the installation the sorry the command to launch the net backup console which is JNBSA if I hit enter Nothing happens because I'm in the wrong directory. I'm on my desktop. So let's go back to user open v net backup bin. And let's try that again. And I don't see any ugly Java errors. So this is already very promising and what it should do is launch a, a graphical user interface that's more Windows-like or more familiar to those of you less experienced with the Unix command line. And I, I'd like to say right here that every aspect of NetBackup can actually be controlled and configured and worked with those commands we saw in the user open v in the various directories such as volume manager and net backup and uh, having the GUI is you know is great and it's windows like so it will probably be familiar to many but it's it's still good to know the unix commands and it looks like it's taken a little while but I don't see any errors, so I believe uh, we should probably just be patient at this point, and it will spawn some kind of Java graphical user interface. And um, from that point, we'll be able to configure the robotics, the robotic arm that picks up the tapes and loads them into the tape drive and configure our backup policies, uh, our schedules, and various aspects of that backup. At this point, I'm going to go ahead and end this video, and um, in the next video, once this console comes up, um, typically, it should not take this long to come up, but I'm connecting remotely o over an SSH session, which is a tremendous amount of traffic sending these GUI components back and forth over my uh, limited network. So it'll probably take a little while, but once it's up, we'll resume uh, the net backup configuration.